Why is no one talking about how doctors actually treat women in menopause? If you've ever walked into a doctor's office and been brushed off telling you this is just part of getting older, then you're not alone. For years, I felt exhausted, I kept putting on weight, and I blamed myself for feeling out of sorts. And every time I left the doctor's office, I felt even worse. Not because I found something wrong, but because they didn't offer me any real solutions. I learned the hard way that there are some serious red flags to watch out for in menopause care. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing seven signs that it might be time to find a new doctor. Stick around to the end to hear the last red flag that made me finally realize it was time to take control of my own health. Now, this first one is so common that it might not even seem like a red flag, but trust me, it is. I remember when I went to visit my, for my normal checkup with my general practitioner, who was a woman, weight had slowly been creeping up, and it was during the COVID time, she looked at me straight in the eye and was like, you know, lots of us at this age just start putting on the pounds. We don't work out as often. Our hormones start kicking in. And I was like, no, I, I have actually been working out more because I've had more time during this whole pandemic. And I've been watching what I eat. I was like, there's something else going on. But she just discounted it as part of my age. So if you're getting that treatment, that's the first clue that maybe this doctor isn't on the same page and you might need to try a little harder to get the care you want. Now this next red flag is super easy to fall into because we go to the doctor with aches and complaints and what does the doctor do but gets the prescription pad out. Now, I luckily knew about this red flag before I ever entered menopause. My husband was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and lupus, which are all autoimmune diseases. He was put on methotrexate, a very harsh drug that gave some benefit, but a whole lot of side effects. And I just kept thinking, there's gotta be some diet and exercise part of this that could help him start feeling better so he wouldn't have to rely on these harsh medications. And I don't know about your husband, but I didn't quite trust my husband to tell me if there was a diet and exercise component. So I went to the doctor with him and that rheumatologist looked us straight in the eye and said, no, lifestyle doesn't really matter. Your, your food and, and exercise don't really help with the autoimmune. It's really just drugs. And when those drugs stop working, we'll switch to other ones. We left that doctor's office so discouraged but I also left so determined. Determined to figure out what foods would actually help him and what movement could he do as he was getting better. And spoiler alert, lifestyle changes do matter. So if a doctor is only offering you prescriptions and discounting any lifestyle changes, that's a huge red flag. I'd love to know what your experience has been with doctors during this menopause transition. Would you give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I know I had to get through several doctors before I found the right one that didn't have these red flags. This next red flag is pretty common and I don't really blame the doctors for it. It's kind of part of our broken medical system because they have to see so many patients in a day to make their quotas. But still being said, they rush those appointments, they don't actually listen to you, and they already have a preconceived notion of what they're gonna prescribe or suggest to you. I experienced this when perimenopause started and I, knew, I kind of felt off and I had read a book about thyroid problems and I was pretty sure my thyroid wasn't quite functioning the way it should be. I brought in the book and showed her some of the tests that maybe we could run to talk about this. And all she wanted to tell me was I was at the age that I needed to get my shingles vaccination and it was time for the flu vaccination. She didn't even wanna to listen to what I came to the appointment for. So if a doctor seems to have their own agenda and is not really ready to actually listen to you, then that's a huge red flag. Now this next red flag, I've talked about it several times cause it just really, oh, it really bothered me. But they just assume that your weight gain or other symptoms are because you are not motivated or disciplined enough with healthy habits. Now, I will admit there were times in my life that that was probably true. I wasn't eating the best, eating junk food and not exercising on a regular basis. But at this time, I knew that wasn't the case. 
I had been intermittent fasting. I had been eating a anti-inflammatory diet. I was exercising on a regular basis and the scale kept going in the wrong direction. But the doctor just looked at me and assumed that I wasn't eating right and I wasn't exercising without even asking me. And I felt like I had to defend myself, but they didn't really believe me. So if your doctor is making assumptions about your lifestyle habits without even asking, that's a red flag. This next red flag really riles me up because so many women go to their doctors and the doctors say, I don't believe in hormones. Like hormone therapy is like Santa Claus, that they have to believe in it. Look at the science and the studies. The Women's Health Initiative back in 2002 that said it caused cancer has been debunked. There's lots of studies that show it's safe and effective and the benefits outweigh the risks. But if a doctor won't even talk to you about it or isn't up on the current studies and recommendations, then that is a huge red flag for menopause. And this next red flag goes right along with it. They won't test your hormones without you asking. And this includes testing your vitamin D levels and your thyroid. And I don't mean just your TSH level. They need to look at a full hormone panel to actually see what is going on. Tests don't guess. Don't just assume by the symptoms where you are on this. And also, when they do these tests, not just go for normal or common. I want optimal levels because I deserve to feel my best, not just mediocre in that normal range. So if a doctor won't test your hormones or you really have to beg for it, then it might be a red flag that it's time to find a new doctor. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more midlife inspiration. This next red flag really sealed the deal for me in that it was time to find a new doctor. And that is when they belittle you for doing your own research. And I don't mean I saw this doctor on Instagram or TikTok that said this. I mean, I read and read and read lots of books on menopause, on thyroid. I listened to podcasts. I came with real solid information. They still acted like they knew best for my body. They belittled me for doing my research. And that right there should be a huge red flag. Your doctor should be working with you to find that optimal treatment and lifestyle that makes you feel your best. And if they're not willing to make it a partnership, that's a huge red flag to find a new doctor. And that is exactly what I did. I fired my general practitioner and I fired my gynecologist and I found a menopause specialist that actually listened to me and was on the same page of finding that hair and lifestyle that really dialed it in and made me feel better in my 50s than I did in my 40s. Remember, you are your best advocate. You don't have to settle for feeling terrible or being dismissed. Seek out specialists who will work with you and will truly align with your health goals. Do your research, track your symptoms, and trust that you deserve the care that supports you every step of the way. If you liked this video, then you'll wanna watch this video here where I give you five perimenopause regrets that I wish I'd known sooner.